Hi, this is Nabil Kiente from Realty X Light. And in this video, I'm going to show you my workflow of how I blend this CG environment with the real life footage that we shot on a green screen. So, without wasting any more time, let's get started. So, I go to Pinterest to look for some reference online and the overall looks that I want. Uh, so, I just type the word Trons, and there's a lot of cool stuff there to reference, and this is just for inspiration type thingy. So I save the reference that I like and take a bunch of them and then compile them into one image. Instead of using Photoshop to manually place all the images, I use PRFs because it makes it so much easier to see all the reference at once. So when I'm done with the reference, then I start to draw all the parts that I wanted to use for the scene and I use Photoshop for this one. Uh, I open up the reference on my secondary monitor so that I can always look at the reference while I drew this concept. So at this day it doesn't have to look cool yet, but try to make it as best as you can. I think it would look cool if I add these trees here to make it look more symmetry and I did that. And then I add the character, I let her sit on the thrones and after that I drew the deer and the boar. And believe it or not, that's the deer and the boar. It sucks. So the next step is modeling. Uh, initially I'm trying to model everything by myself but it took me way too long than I expected so I just ended up buying some of the assets like the boar and the deer. <clears throat> and I also use some um, free assets like rocks, plants and some other stuff as well. I also have to sculpt these rocks that we see on the final render and Blender has improved in sculpting a lot and one thing I really like about Blender is because we don't have to worry about the vertex counts once we enable uh, the dying topology features and I did the same things for the rocks behind the throne as well After I spent around like 2-3 days and I finally done with the modeling part, uh, this is the wireframe view and this scene is about 1.5 million vertices which is nothing for Blender 2.8, it can handle with ease. So after I'm done with the modeling, then the next part is texturing. I use Substance Painter for this one because we can get for the realistic texture faster. Once I know how to work in Substance Painter, then I rarely go back to Blender for texturing if it's not for a really good reason. And since Substance is also a pleasure workflow, it is so easy to change everything that you've done. And this is gonna be so much important later. I export a texture and re-import it to Blender. All I have to do is connect the wire to the right sockets. And also I add a bit of more AO in the crevices. And I did the same for the rest of the object as well. I want to see the overall looks of the scene, so I start lighting up the scene. And I add some moonlight at the back. This will also serve as the hair light, or we can say rim light for our creatures. And then I add field light on the front, then I just play around with the light till I'm happy with the result. render so I change the cycles to see more accurate result and why I don't use easy for the final render is because we always get less accurate result on the AO part and the reflections on the, outs, uh, on the object outside the screen to seamlessly blend the CG environment with the real life footage I have to see all light will fall on our subject, so I add this character on the scene. And we pay very close attention to our virtual character 
and I'll try to match our lighting in the shooting phase. I also look at different angles to see more accurate uh, result of how light falls on her. And finally, now we are in the shooting phase. Since I've already made all my model based on the real world size, so when she sits on the green screen, her hands falls exactly on the virtual throne. Uh, we add all these markers to track our camera movement and we're gonna recreate uh, the exact movement of the virtual one. And I know it's always funny to see the main character acting on the screen, but once we remove that, it's gonna look cool. Now it's time to do the camera tracking. I use those markers to recreate the movement of a real world camera. Even though it might not be exactly the same movement, but soft air of below 0.3 is enough and I managed to get uh, 0.22 for this track. I track those markers manually because I have predefined position for those markers to be on the 3D space. So what I mean is that I want these markers to be exactly here on top of the arm support so that I can uh, I know all those markers are located exactly where they are supposed to be in the 3D space now I double check if there's uh, anything noticeable sliding on the virtual camera and I think it's fine the CG environment I have to remove those green screen and replace them with our own CGI. So instead of using Blender for King the Green Screen, I use After Effects because it has a bit more advanced features than Blender for this case. And I also have to remove all this unwanted stuff using a mask. Then I track all those marks, uh, all those masks automatically and manually sometimes. So instead of adding the key up sequence in compositing, I import it as an image sequence and this is a little bit tricky because I can use the Y and the Z position of the camera but I can't use the X position because it will snap to the camera. So instead I have to use it to drive the scale of this plane and I use driver to do that. And we don't have to import this two plane. I did here because for some reason uh, when this image sequence is placed close to the Tron, did the Tron magically lose its texture and become gray? So I use one to cast a shadow and one to be visible on the camera. And after I'm done with everything, then I add this tier, then I animate it, then I add some fur. To simulate the fur, and I did the same for this board as well. And I just add a little bit of color correction on the compositing, and that's pretty much it. So, thank you so much for watching this video, uh, and please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video.